What's up, YouTube? Rusty here. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time, if I could, to talk about growing your own food. And I can really only speak for myself when I say this, but I've grown to enjoy growing my own food. Not that I grow a lot, but I will admit it is a little satisfying to cook something you grew yourself rather than just went to the store. Sorry, I know the wind's picking up a little bit, but it's kind of like when you made something yourself, right? If you make it yourself, it might mean just a little more than if you just went and bought it yourself. So I do recommend getting started if you haven't already. And if you have, stick around for a few minutes. I'm hoping there's some stuff that you could use or maybe you can even help me out by putting your two cents in the comments about what it is I'm doing. After all, I suppose I did start this channel to grow myself as much as I'm trying to help you grow food. So with that said, um, first off, most of the stuff I grow is in five gallon buckets or planting pots. I do have a raised garden bed. I've tried having a garden Granted, it was a long time ago when I was a lot busier, but all that bending over, weeding and stuff wasn't necessarily for me. I didn't take care of it the same. Now I can put these planters where I want them or where they're getting good sunlight, of course, but there's less work, less weeding, and it's just easier to water. So I do recommend going that route, especially if you're just getting started. Um... I'm going to actually refer to another video I saw recently. I want to say the channel name is Appalachian Homestead, I hope. Um, her name's Patera. Maybe you know the channel, maybe you don't. Check it out if you have, if you don't know it. Um, but in short, she did a video on growing potatoes in five-gallon buckets. And while she was saying it was a good idea, she was kind of warning people that, you know, you're not going to, survive off of growing potatoes in five gallon buckets for the rest of your life and i do want to kind of throw out there that yeah she's right i've been growing five gallon bucket potatoes for the past couple of years most of my potatoes end up between the size of a golf ball and a baseball that's not necessarily such a bad thing but you do have to have a lot of planters if you're really trying to grow enough food to sustain yourself for a little while, you'd have to have an awful lot of them. But that's all the more reason to get started now. With me, personally, as I got started, it's fairly simple. You, I went to the store, I bought the planters or five-gallon buckets, I have both, drilled my holes in the bottom of the, the sides of the bottom of the barrel so that you can let water back out if you overwater it and then I'd buy the dirt and of course I'd buy good fertile dirt use it I'd get good results and then fall would roll around the dirt would pretty much just sit there from fall until spring until the next spring I'd go to plant more more often than not I've been adding to what I grow so of course I'd buy more planters and then I'd buy more dirt and then I myself would bring the dirt home mix it with the old dirt that I had that way you refertilized what you had spread it out a little bit and then the same thing you grow your plants fall comes around the dirt just sits there the point I'm trying to make is now I'm reaching a point where I'm not quite worried about getting more dirt it's going to be more about fertilizing the dirt that I have so I've been looking into this type of stuff and I am going to warn you a lot of the stuff that I look into is of course the stuff that I use myself so there's going to be a lot of things that I don't talk about um, first thing I'll bring up is say composting I'm not going to say what I do is composting because I don't I, I, I'm not happy about this part of myself either but I don't eat the best 
I don't eat the most natural stuff. I don't have a huge garden, so I don't have all these quote-unquote extra greens to mix with the compost. But I do kind of do my own version of it, and I'll show you a little bit of that myself today. And I know this is a little early, but I had a little bit of dirt left over from this spring that I didn't do anything with, so I left it in a pot. We actually just had a storm the other day, and let me switch my camera around. So, this is the extra pot that I had, which did have a little bit of dirt in it. And what I'm trying to show you, so we just had a storm roll through here a couple of days ago. I had a bunch of trees and, well, not trees come down, but a bunch of limbs come down from my trees. One of them, the bark was already coming off of pretty good. I'm hoping you can tell that I just crumbled up all that bark and stuck it in there. There's also some bonfire ashes and charcoal kind of mixed up in there because all the brush that I burn up, after it cooled down, it hasn't rained since I had that bonfire. So I pulled all those ashes out of my fire pit and dumped them right in here. Now I am going to keep watering this. In fact, I'll stir down a little bit. You can even see, I, don't, I doubt you can tell, but you can even see that some of those I dumped in there a couple of days ago and I actually dumped a couple cups of water just to help soak all this stuff up. And I'm going to do that on occasion. So part of the reason I did that is fairly simple. When you go to the store and buy dirt, you'll see a lot of wood chips within that dirt. So I figured when I had all that bark, I just grabbed it, broke it up into smaller pieces, and threw it in there for now. I know right now all that stuff's just sitting on the top. It's not going anywhere and probably until next spring. I had to get up and get away a little bit, but I wanted to show you this. And part of the reason I wanted to show you the kiddie pool, as I call it, it's just an old kid's pool that I actually had in my shed. I think it was left over from animals using it. To make a long story short, I was going to throw it away or throw it in a garage sale, whatever ended up becoming of it. And then I got to thinking about it. That thing will hold quite a bit of dirt. Now, I usually use my raised garden bed to just dump all my dirt or whatever. At the end of the year I, or at the in the spring, I use that to mix up my dirt, do all of that. But that's even getting rather full when I try to do that. So when I saw this, not only is that a good idea for me, but I figure it would be a good idea or an option for you if you find something like that, even a garbage bin or something big enough. It depends on how many planters you have. But point being, if you can have something or somewhere to put that dirt through the fall until the spring. And while it's sitting there, do exactly like I'm doing to this little pot, which is what I'm going to do to all of it this fall. I'm going to dump all that dirt into this pool, and throughout the fall, my plan is to continue putting, whether it's wood chips, uh, this fall I'll probably have a few extra bonfires, fall I usually do, some of those ashes will make it into that. And then... Here's something I do want to talk a little bit about is milk for fertilizer. This is something I've looked into a little bit, and the reason I want to talk about it is that I've seen a lot of good and bad on it. I've been trying it out myself, and I just wanted to get with you on how my results are. Um, first off, I saw a lot of people that were warning about it. But I think a lot of the people warning about it were people that were watering every day with a 50% milk, 50% water. 
I don't know what percentage milk. I would assume probably 1%. I, it doesn't matter. I use 2%, which is probably a little stronger milk than, say, skim. And I water mine down probably 5, 6 to 1. Easy. I'd only give them about a gallon of that 6 to 1 milk to water ratio once every couple of weeks because let's face it I, I'd have that little you know that inch or two of milk at the bottom of the gallon that would go bad I'd fill the gallon up with water and I'd give that to all my plants which wasn't even enough water for all of my plants which means I was still going back and giving them all water so point being it was a very diluted solution so to speak if you were to water your plants every day with that milk water concoction, yes, you are going to get a smell. Not to mention, that from, I would think you're over fertilizing at that point. I don't know, but I don't necessarily suggest doing it on a regular basis. But for people like me who say buy a gallon of milk every couple of weeks and has that little bit that might go bad, don't just dump that down your drain, which is what I always did. Water it down a little bit. And if you're not watering your plants with it, all winter long, I plan on just dumping it in my little, I'm going to call it a compost pile, but it's not quite a compost pile by definition. But, uh, let's see, for me, eggs are another one. I do eat not a lot of eggs, but enough, especially with having a dog. You may have noticed I give them to her once in a while. Well, point being, again, I've been keeping my eggshells. Set them aside. Once in a while, if my little bin gets full, I crush them down into smaller pieces until I get the chance to come out here and dump them in, whether it's my plants or, again, my little compost bin. And I, I, I suppose I can't really sit here and get into each and every little detail. I know coffee is a good one, but I'm not a coffee drinker myself, so that one doesn't really do me any good. And it's the same with food scraps you probably do want to pay a little attention to what kind of food scraps you're putting in there because again it depends on how it was made and whatnot I won't just throw any old food scraps in there but at the same time I am trying to learn what's good for my plants even even the little leftover potatoes when I'm done you'll get a couple of fingernail style sized potatoes that, that are still attached uh, just leave those in there, let them break back down. It's good for them. Um, leaves, of course, are another good one. Mulch them up. They break down over time. I do plan on throwing some of those in there. And really, that's what I'm trying to learn myself to do more is I don't want to have to rely on going to buy fertilizer every year. When push comes to shove... There's plenty of stuff that I throw away or, again, you see I have a backyard. I actually just mowed. I usually leave that outside the fence a little longer. I have a lot of rabbits and deer and all kinds of animals that come through my yard. This might sound gross, but hey, if I got to go out there with a shovel and scoop up a little bit of their poop to fertilize my garden, so be it. You do have to mix it in. That's the key. A lot of people just think, oh, that's gross. Well, it, it breaks down. And, it, and you, have to, you do have to give it time to break down. That's actually another beauty of having this little side bin is the more dirt that I have, the more dirt I have left over. And if I'm not always using all the dirt that I have, that means I always have some that's sitting there getting re-fertilized, right? So... These are some of the things that I've been doing. I'm not saying I'm an expert. This is... I'm hoping you are getting something out of this, while at the same time, if you're watching this and you've been gardening for years and you're watching this going, well, maybe you ought to try this or maybe you ought to try that. Please, feel free to put that in the comments. Like I said before, I'm, I'm here on YouTube to learn. Now, that's not necessarily why I started a channel. I watch other people to learn, but now that's the beauty of having this channel for myself is hopefully other people are watching and 
I would like your two cents. You, I know a lot of people can give bad information, but for every bit of bad information you can get, there can be a little bit of good information in there too. So just do me a favor, and if you do critique something, tell me why. Or if you do think that something's a good idea, tell me why. That way I know, and hopefully somebody that's watching this can learn. So... Been in the background of a couple. This was actually my great grandfather's 1938. Sun's shining. I back up too much and I'll get a huge glare, so I thought I'd feature it for a quick second. I think that's about all I've got for you. Um, I guess if nothing else, as usual, I hope everybody's doing well and I hope to talk to you again soon. Take care, guys.